All right, guys. Well, tonight's gonna be heavy fab. Um, I guess in the three wheeler, three wheeler world, this is considered heavy fab. We're gonna relate. We're gonna release the uh, the chassis for the starter. We're going to uh, work on the exhaust and get it going. I've uh, got a uh, CRF 230 uh, aftermarket. Uh, 80, $85 Amazon uh, exhaust system. It's stainless steel. That's why I bought it. I can work with stainless steel. I do uh, a little stainless steel welding for fun. So I, I'm set up for that. So that's why I got that one as opposed to aluminum steel or, or you know, some, something else. Um, I felt like I could work with it and uh, we're going to see how that turns out. That should turn out pretty good.
go. This is a CRF 230 exhaust system. Nothing special. Cheap on Amazon, $86, but it fit. It fit pretty good too. I'm sure somebody could have done a better job with snaking it around there. A couple things I wanted to pick up for sure. I wanted to pick up this mounting bolt right here and re remember when we started it was pointing down kind of at a weird goofy angle i wanted it straight so i could come out of here with a tab either come across or come up or something but i wanted to pick up on that support and then of course i wanted to try the best i could and hit the factory mark i can weld a bolt on here and bring it through a stud or a nut or you know any combination there but i hit the factory uh, pickup point and it's lower now and it's straight so it will clear the rear fender. Actually, I have one. There you go. First official test fit. I'm pleased with that now, fellas. Guys, I think that uh, I think that's a home run right there if you can weld. Now that welding is uh, stainless steel. I use, a, I use a MIG welder, um, not a TIG guy yet, but I use a MIG welder and uh, stainless steel wire and then 80-20 uh, mix on my argon. I can weld anything with it, you know, stainless steel wise. It won't rust up. Um, you can, uh, you know, wire wheel it and kind of give it a finish on it. I do uh, some weird things with stainless steel. You may have noticed I added uh, a, uh, a friend to the shop. Y'all want to look real close. Everything you see is either a spoon, a fork, or a knife. If you look real close, the teeth are actually forks. So, like I don't have enough to do. Um, I dabble in uh, artwork, I guess you could say. So anyways, I'll bring a few other pieces out later on as we go, but that was, uh, that was the first one. I do want to give a shout out to uh, Sammy's Flags. I've got one of those in this week. Check this out. He was kind enough to send that to me, 200X. Got both models represented there. There you go. 8384, which is what we're building here, and the 8586. So Sammy, I appreciate that. It looks good on the wall. We're gonna try to maybe set up a uh, photo spot there. Looks good. I hadn't decided if that's where it's gonna stay or not, but I like it. He's got a whole line of flags. Even if you're uh, one of them Kawasaki Suzuki Yamaha guys, he's got uh, he's got flags for you. He's, check him out. He's on Facebook. Uh, type in Sammy's flags. You'll find him. Go straight to him. There'll be a link in the description to his uh, to his Facebook site. Y'all show him some love and, uh, and, and check out his stuff. But this is going to be a quick video. I'll chop this up. I'm, I'm pleased as I can be with that. That, uh, that cleared really, really good. For making something work and for the money, I think that's a home run right there. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to I have an issue with that at all. It sticks out a little bit past the fender, not much. About what factory would be. Maybe a tad more. My other one's got a, uh, it's old and rusty, but it actually doesn't sound too bad. This is an old Super Trap uh, pipe on it, and you can see it's, uh, it's seen better days, but uh, it's all there. It's all there. There you go. You need an exhaust for your 200X 8384. I can't vouch for the 8586s. If you need one for your 8384, that is not a bad little kit. You saw what I did. I chopped it twice. I rotated the bracket, stuck it back together. I don't know how it sounds. I'm excited to see how that's going to turn out. But uh, I think it'll sound good. The reviews on it is it sounds pretty good. So I got a little bit more. I'm going to pull the exhaust off and start clearing for the starter. That's next. I want to do all the frame uh, modifications now before we tear it down any further. So 
that's next on the list is to clear this front starter. That's the whole reason we did that. That and the lower motor mount. So, uh, wow, that turned out good. I'm a huge fan of a four and a half inch grinder. This is probably the third one I've had. Two of them actually still run. Um, they are the Swiss Army knife of my shop. You grind, cut, sand, blend. I mean, makes my welds look a lot better. I know that. So this is the piece I'm gonna attempt to use for a recess on our frame rail. Let's see how it works. Ideally, we get this starter mocked up and we only have to pull this motor out one more time. I doubt I'll get that lucky, but we'll try. Now, I've heard guys are just heating this up and bending it. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. And I like where it's at, but uh, it seems to be going to be in the same places where the starter wants to be. It should be. I think once we get it cut, we put the motor back in. thickness of your pipe as long as you replace it with something as thick or thicker and in this case all I have is something thicker which is going to work out just fine we'll see the bigger question is did I cut it in the right spot fitment not too shabby certainly can clean it up just a little bit I think she'll fit right in there and this pipe is bigger than I needed I knew that Alright, we're 
back in and we're square. We're good. Oh, let's see where we land. We can take the starter apart. We can index it. Oh, we're not going to have to. Did lose a nut, though. Oh, that's close. Oh, look at that. Yeah. How's that for clearance, Clarence? Not bad, our first test fit. Not bad at all. So it looks like we've got plenty up here to insert that piece of pipe. It does get a little tight here where this uh, support bar is. There's a one on the bottom here on the starter. We can index the starter a little bit, try to get that out of the way. But we're gonna run into it. This stud getting really close to the frame and I, I don't like that. If it rotates while you're riding, you know, it's, it's 12 volts right there when you hit the key. And so uh, I prefer to keep that further from the frame if possible. But I'm, I'm pleased about that. And that kind of answers my question too about this upper front motor mount. I think we're gonna end up coming into it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make one lower here and not disregard this one. I'm gonna cut it off and blend it in uh, when I weld in the piece of pipe. But I'm happy with that. I, a, I talked to a guy the other day. He said he heated his. I don't. I don't know how he heated it that far without bending the whole pipe out. That's the reason I cut mine. I know that's kind of, some people may disagree, but if you heat a pipe up to bend it this close together to clear the starter, you're gonna distort this whole pipe. Maybe that was his intentions. Maybe, maybe I misunderstood. Maybe his whole intention was to bow this pipe out um, and clear the starter that way. I wanted to try to make it as clean as I could, keep it within the footprint of the bike as long as I could do it structurally and safe now keep in mind guys i'm almost 50 years old i will not be jumping this thing uh, i'm gonna ride it don't get me wrong but uh my motocross days are over you start paying for life insurance and you'll understand why but there we go i don't think we're going to get much further tonight um i think uh, i think this is going to close down the shop tonight on end on a high note i told you i painted the tank Y'all saw me paint the tank last week. I painted it black. I told you I painted it black, but it wasn't gonna be black. Well, there's a story here, and, and if it comes together, I'll, I'll explain it uh, probably at the end of this video. But uh, it's not black, it's white now. It is white. So we went from black to white. We're almost, we're almost there. It's, it's going along. It's uh. It's been a challenge, I, I, I gotta tell you. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't go well. So uh, I'll explain at the end of this video or the beginning of the next one. Um, one way or the other, I'll, I'll let you know. But uh, yeah, oh, uh, 200 XE's coming right along. I'm, I'm happy about it. I think the exhaust, y'all saw that come together. That turned out really good. If you're an Instagram subscriber, you probably already saw that. I sent that out live. And uh, that was my first live reel, they call it. So, old dog learning new tricks. Soon, the next phase, once we get this starter relief welded back into the frame, there's two brackets I want to cut off that we're not going to be using anymore. Uh, since, we're, since we're not going to use them, um, there's really no point in them being there. So, and it's these two here. This one right here, it's kind of the exhaust was touching it. So, that needs to go out of the way so I can gain a little bit more room here. And... Uh, these original bolts here, this is where the brake reservoir was. I, I may leave it just cause it's here, but this one's definitely got to go. This one's got to go. Other than that, I'm really pleased with it. We get that done, then I'm gonna tear it down the rest of the way. We'll move the front end off and we'll take the rear swing arm out, the uh, wire wheel, the chassis, and then we're gonna paint it red before we go back on the final assembly. But we're, we're almost there. The most of the fab work got done tonight. So I'm pleased about that. So as always, thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. 
Uh, keep it up, and I wills too. Y'all take care. Bye.